Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. My name is Joseph and if you're new and you haven't seen this channel before, thank you for taking the chance on the channel. I make Photoshop and photography related videos just like this one. So if it's something that you're interested in, then I think you should consider subscribing. As you've seen from today's title, what I'm going to be talking about is certain things that I think you can do or experiment with when you're shooting with natural light that is going to help improve on your natural light photography. And I'm saying this because when you're starting out with natural light photography or with photography in general, I know that a lot of people will be telling you to invest in artificial lights, get strobes and flashes because those give you control and those even allow you to modify the light in so many ways and also allow you to shoot at any point in time. Then again, when you're shooting with natural light, there are also those who will tell you that natural light is free. The sun actually is free. It lights up everything. But then there are certain things that you can't do with natural light. You can't control it. You can't shape it to give you exactly what you want. Of course, you can't be very precise with natural light, but you can't do certain things to modify it and create the lighting patterns and textures that you need. All right, so moving on to today's shoot and the things that happened and the things that I learned or basically like the kind of lighting that I used because my situation was almost the most difficult situation that you'd be in because when you're when you're looking or researching on shooting with natural light a lot of the information out there is giving you specific times of day to shoot for example they'll tell you shoot at golden hour because that is where you get the best direction that is also when you have the nicest lights which is true but if you're shooting for clients doesn't mean that you're going to be pushing all of your clients work towards uh, later in the day and then just shooting in golden hour what if you are supposed to shoot like a fashion line and you're waiting till golden hour which even lasts just a few minutes by the way doesn't mean you're going to be shooting over several days till you complete that job what if you're in an area where you can't modify the light because a lot of people to also say that shooting the shade or always backlight never you know light your subject with the sun and I'm going to show you with examples all the lighting scenarios that I played with that I think are really beneficial if you're shooting under natural light conditions where you have absolutely nothing to modify the light you have no reflectors you have no place for shade doesn't mean that that shoot isn't going to happen. What I did and the kind of lighting that I played with, I played with side light, I played with a little bit of like a 45 degree light, I played with backlight, and then I also played with the sun straight onto my subject. I also played with some funny angles just, and even with like zoom ratios, just to give me like a variety in the image. And you notice that um, when I'm showing the images or when they're popping up on the screen, you see that if that was like an entire shoot that I was doing for a client, she has a variety of images to choose from and she'll be really happy with the work that we were able to produce. So I'm going to start off with the side light because that's what I actually started with. And my thought process for this one in particular was I wanted her face to have that textural light and so I turned her body in such a way that it's not going to be lit so much by the direct sunlight and rather she's going to turn her face into where the light is coming in from an angle and that is going to create a bit of like a textured light which I absolutely love so her face is going to have like the most contrast the most dynamic light and then the rest of the outfit is just going to be in a soft light because that part isn't directly being lit up by the directional sunlight and i think it worked because it gave me like a very interesting lighting pattern which i believe you can't even really reproduce with artificial light you're going to have to use specific modifiers like use a harsh light at a point in time then add a fill light but then the sun just one sun just gave me this variety in lighting which i think if you play with is going to help elevate your natural light work What I did with this is instead of having the light come in from the side, I just turned here a little bit, even my shooting angle as well, so that we can have a bit of like a 45 degree angle. And you know this is something that I love to do when I'm shooting in the studio as well. I always want my light to come in at a 45 degree angle because I feel the shadow patterns are very nice that way. And because all the artificial light that we are using um, to light our subject is also mimicking natural light. I feel like being in that natural space, there was actually no reason for me not to use that 45 degree lighting. And I think it really, really worked well for what we created that day.
So after I had those two lighting scenarios, I also felt, well, like there are other things that I can do if the light is not in my favor to still create very interesting images and that was to play with very weird angles. So you'd realize that at this point, I didn't want to light her up with the sun because she was bending over towards my camera and I knew that if I rather turned her towards where the sun was and it was going to be lighting up my subject, I would have really had like unflattering light because yes, naturally when you're shooting in the studio even, you don't want your light to be directly on top of your subject because it's going to create those raccoon shadows under their eyes and it's just going to create overall on flattering shadows so in this case I decided to turn my subjects back towards the Sun let the Sun come from behind and then I also was shooting from a lower angle and trying to fill a lot of hair with the frame even though I was shooting at a wide angle I felt like playing with those angles in the direction of the sunlight just helped me create very interesting and different images that I normally would be capturing and this is something that I wouldn't have even thought about doing if I was shooting in the studio with my controlled lighting but because I was working with the sun and looking for angles and and lighting patterns that would create very interesting images I felt this forced me to just experiment and I really really love the way this lighting turned out and the images overall shooting with a wide angle getting close to her, distorting parts of the uh, frame and also having the light peeking through from the back just created these beautiful images that I absolutely, absolutely love. So after I experimented with these, I also wanted to focus on certain lighting patterns so you guys can see the difference because I've been talking about it and you're not seeing any side by side so you can't really tell the difference between those lighting patterns, right? So what I decided to do for the latter part of the set of images that I was creating is I decided to start off with direct light. I know that direct light creates a lot of deep dark shadows, it also creates a lot of texture on the skin and depending on who you're shooting, certain people you won't find harsh light to be very flattering on them but I know my subjects would still look good even if I'm using this harsh direct sunlight on here. The only thing or the only issue with shooting with direct harsh sunlight is your subjects have a high tendency of squinting and that's another reason why people are always telling you to backlight just so you can have more life in the eyes but you can control this even if you're shooting with natural light. You can ask your subject to close your eyes and a count of three ask them to just open their eyes and just take very quick shots and for me in my case I asked her if she was comfortable opening her eyes because I just wanted to quickly grab a few few stills and she was and we actually just captured a few frames and you know because we're not having her face all the way into the sun she was playing with her hands across her face I think it worked well and it gave us like these very interesting portraits and I love these ones as well In the same space, I now decided to just turn her away from the light so that it's not going to be a direct harsh light. I wanted to play with side lights also using the same portrait mode that I was shooting in just to figure out if I was still going to create very interesting light and also for you guys to see the difference between the harsh direct light and also the side light. And these images are beautiful because you're playing with contrast of light. One point of the image is a little bit bright then you're moving into mid-tones and you have some shadow patterns in there as well. These are just creating a very very dynamic look in the image images and I absolutely love it. Because the sun is high up in the sky and it's lighting up the entire sky, even though you're, the hot spot is coming in from an angle, you still have the rest of the sky lighting up everywhere else and so you have a natural feel and that is what I feel just gave the images that very nice look because you have your saucy light from one direction but then you still have soft light coming in and filling in the shadows just opening them up and then just giving you very very pleasing looking lighting on your subject. I'm so sick of waiting and getting too restless to be in this dusty town. I've heard of this place where people forget and you get another try. So come open up my door. 
After doing all of this, I also just wanted to quickly just turn her around and let her back face the sun so that we can shoot backlit and then see if we can still capture very beautiful looking images. And yes, she was able to open her eyes freely. She was able to give me a variety of expressions. She was more comfortable shooting in that way. But then again, this video is just to show you that don't let all these rules restrict you from shooting. Even if you have like directional light and shadow patterns, they can add up to the image. Don't let it limit you. Don't let it stop you from experimenting. Even if those rules are telling you not to do it, still just try it out and see if you can do anything to improve upon it. Because when you do an experiment with lighting that way, you can have more control, more experience, and then when you're presented with any situation, you know exactly how to handle it. So let me know how you feel about these images that we created. Do you think it was worth shooting in this direct harsh sunlight and playing with all these lighting scenarios, these different zoom ratios, these different angles I was experimenting with? Let me know how you feel about the images down below. Do you prefer the direct harsh lighting? Do you prefer the side lights? Do you prefer the backlight? Let me know in the comments down below. And um, I'll catch you guys in the next video. I actually have another set of images that we'll be looking at from this same photo shoot later on um, on the channel so subscribe if you haven't i'll catch you guys in the next video and remember don't ever give up